Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And now, since I received my CD32 riser from uh, Aronet, I've been having a bit of fun playing about with uh, different settings, workbench ISOs and things. Um, but recently, I've put the CF card on to my uh, CD32 adapter. And now I'm using an IDE drive as well as the CD of ROM. Now the next stage from that would be try some of the other ports. So as you can see we have a VGA which is 15 kilohertz RGB. We have a PS2 keyboard adapter and we have audio out. Now the 15 kilohertz VGA is currently displaying black and white. Why that is I'm not sure but I'll have a little play with that. But the thing that's given me most grief is the PS2 adapter. Now the PS2 runs on this little PIC chip here with two resistors here, one for data and one for the clock signal. And I've been reading the forums and people have been saying, oh, it only works with some keyboards and not with others. You need an old keyboard, not a modern keyboard. You can't use USB, it has to be PS2 has to be the original protocols for PS2, which is the the, uh, the really quite old keyboards, not the pseudo USB PS2 thingamabobs. So it got me wondering, what keyboard is supposed to work with these things? So I've read the forums and I've read various people saying, you need an original PS2 style keyboard. So Going to the loft, I've got three PS2 style keyboards, and every one of them draws uh, not the comma, the hyphen, whatever it is, a repeating key anyway on the when it's plugged in, whether it be random letters or whatever key it is. It's as though the key is one key is stuck down. You've got an endless repeat until it fills the screen, and then the Amiga just flashes funny, funny error messages at you which is fine and dandy. However, uh, I did expect one of my keyboards to work, but it seems none of them do. So I've then proceeded to buy an old PS2 keyboard, and that does exactly the same. So I've researched more and read more, and people say you need a Hewlett Packard keyboard. The exact number escapes me now, but I'll put it on the screen for what it's worth. And people say, yes, that worked fine with me. I've not had a moment's trouble since. Uh, well, that didn't work either. It continued to show the same repeating key. Or it may have been, actually, it may have been another repeating key. But whatever it was, it was a constant repeating key. So then I thought, right. I contacted Ed, or Edu, and said, uh, right, how do I disable this PIC controller? to allow me to use the keyboard connector on this CD32. Because I discovered that when you have a PIC controller connected, giving you PS2, and you go to try to use an Amiga keyboard or a PS2 keyboard with an adapter onto the CD32, it won't work. It completely disables it. So you cannot use the Amiga CD32 keyboard port, at least not with a PS2 adapter, with a CD32 riser if it has the PIC enabled or fitted or whatever. So I contacted Edu and said, what's the easiest way to disable the PIC controller? And he said, remove the data resistor and remove the clock resistor. So I said, okay, I'm going to do that. But then I thought, why is it doing it? Why am I getting a repeating key when other people have it working and I don't? So I took them both off and I changed them around. Now you won't be able to see that, but I'll try and get a little zoom into this and put it on the video. So I've changed both resistors over. I've put the data one onto clock and the clock one onto data. Plugged it in and it works perfectly. So now I have a fully working PS2 keyboard connected to the Amiga. 
Not only that, but all the other keyboards I had worked fine as well. So let that be a lesson to you. So if you have one of these risers, whether it be by Kipper or Hephaesto or whoever makes it, um, I don't think the same issues apply with the old SX, SX1 things. Um, I think they work it just fine. But if you have an issue with a repeating key on your Amiga, on your CD32, and you're plugging a PS2 keyboard into this, which is what it's made for, um, swap the resistors over and you might find all your problems go away. You have to be careful, you have to be delicate, you need tweezers and you need a fine point soldering iron. You can heat up one side, touch the other and the resistor will fall off. So it's quite easy, but it's small and fiddly, so be careful and don't burn anything. If you think you're going to burn something or you're a bit wobbly or you can't see, put some tin foil around this thing. Uh, but there we go. So I'll, I'll just probably tack a little photo on the end of this showing it working. My CD32 is once again playing up and being stupid. Um, sometimes it turns on and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm using my spare CD32, which works fine through S Video, but not through Composite. So it's that's a good excuse to get this working, as I don't really care about Composite, as the quality is not good enough for doing streams and things, which is what I want to do. Um, the reason I wanted the keyboard working is so I can get into various games. I can quit WHD Load and and perhaps put a stream together um, showing various things running on the 68020. So that's my plan. And I wanted to do that today, but it's taken me most of the day, well, most of the afternoon, anyway, I finished work early today, most of the afternoon to swap this over, find out my CD32 is playing up, find the other CD32, that wouldn't produce a signal, so on and forth, so forth, so endless, endless pain, pain and grief. But anyway, we're at a stage now where I have a working keyboard, we just have a black and white signal, so now time to play with that. So that's the next stage. So hopefully in the next, well, it's probably in the next week sometime, we should have a video with all this up and running and we'll have a play and see what the CD32 could have done if Commodore had bothered to put any fast RAM into the machine. But anyway, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.